Hello, my name is Jack Hatter. I'm the principal of McKinney Middle School in Yellow Springs High School. I would like to welcome all of our sixth grade students and families. Normally, I would be holding a meeting and we would be meeting face to face where we'd be able to go through this presentation, answer questions, and then actually tour our building. Uh, with the pandemic that's going on, we just aren't able to do that. But I still want to get this information out to you and to open lines of communication so that I can answer any questions you may have regarding what middle school may look like for your, your child next year. At this point, I've had two opportunities to meet with most of our sixth grade students. The first opportunity was when I visited Mills Line and met with our sixth graders in Mr. Gudgel's classes. And the bulk of what you're going to see today, we discussed in there. And then after that, our students um, all came up to the middle school and visited and spent a day traveling our hallways, meeting our teachers, getting a, an idea of what classes will look like up here next year. So what classes will our students take next year? Uh, our classes are broken apart or broken down by two semesters, and some of the classes are year long. So you'll see language arts all year, math all year, science all year, and social studies all year. And then we also have a music offering that our students will take all year. And I'm going to be asking each student to submit their music choice for next year through a Google form that's also attached to the one call that this video was attached to. In addition to those classes, the first semester our students will take a Foundations for Fearless Thinking class. This is a career tech class, um, and it's really an introduction to communication. So it's looking at different forms of communication, audio, video, um, presentation, um, graphic design, some of those different skills that, that our students would need in the career. Um, and then it's taking that and combining that with content from other content areas and combining those two things with some of the uh, foundational PBL skills that we think make our students well-rounded. So presentation, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, innovation. Um, and then in addition to that class, our students will also take health and PE the first semester. At the change of semester, which is typically in mid-January, our students will stop taking those two classes and they will be replaced by a live and performing arts class and then a visual arts class. These are also both career tech classes. Uh, live and performing arts is is an intro to performing arts. It's a, a little bit of a theater class, but it's really just helping our students get comfortable presenting in front of their peers and being in that setting. And then the art class is an introduction to visual arts. Um, and again, that, that's actually probably more closely aligned to a traditional art class, but it's looking at the communication, collaboration, the skills that somebody would need to be successful in an art career. Where do these classes happen? So this is a map of our building, and we intentionally do not have any of our middle school classes occur on the second floor or third floor. So you'll see that all of our middle school classes take place on the first floor. The green box here is our gymnasium. That's the part of the building that most of our students who have visited our building probably visited. The front doors to our building are right here. So you'll see that when our students enter, this red um, kind of sideways eight here is, are the hallways that our students would walk. So Essentially, our students' classes all sit in this big rectangle that goes around our building, and then there's a single hallway that cuts through that rectangle. This hallway does not have any classes, but it houses our eighth grade lockers and serves as a shortcut from the middle or from the front of our building to the back of our building. Our seventh grade lockers all sit in this hallway here, and these are the shoe boxes. Um, the first class that you would enter, this room 101, would be Mr. Adolph's language arts class. And then as you go down the seventh grade hallway, we have our intervention specialist classroom here and here. And then we have our social studies classroom towards the back of the building. And then as you go down the back hallway, we have our uh, foundations class, our health classroom, our science classroom, our math classroom. And then we also have our fitness center that our students are able to use after school. And it's also used in our health and PE classes. And then as you come back around this corner, and start heading back towards the front of the building. You'll see the hallway does jog a bit here, um, but we have our middle school art classroom sits here. And then when you get back to the front of the building, students can break out in the space shuttle is where all of our music classes will take place. And then our live and performing arts class is in the front of the building. As you come back to kind of this main intersection, our students can turn here and this is where our students will eat lunch. And then across from the cafeteria is where our library sits. Our students, one of the main fears our students have when they come to middle school is that they'll either get lost or that they'll be late. Um, 
we, for the first two weeks, we have a complete hold harmless policy for our students. So if they end up in a wrong class or they get to a class late, that is completely fine. We understand that they're transitioning from having just a few teachers to having seven new classes. Um, and instead of traveling as a group, they're all traveling kind of independently, whatever their schedule says. They do have a four minute transition time, which is plenty of time to get from one class to the next class um, and to stop by the locker or a restroom on the way. Um, but it is something that takes a little bit of planning and practice. Attached to this uh, one call is a Google form where I'm going to ask that our students choose a music offering for next year. All of the sixth graders currently take either band or orchestra, um, and we encourage the students to continue in band or orchestra if they're in there now. Whichever class they're in, we encourage them to continue. The reason we really encourage that is because middle school band and orchestra look different than elementary. So um, our students will meet five days a week, and as the students get better and, and learn their instruments better and become or uh, improve their craft, the pace of the class improves drastically. Um, the student skill set starts to come along quickly, and the students are able to play a lot of different music, a lot of, uh, more modern music, stuff that they can relate to more. So we encourage them to stick with their instrument for at least seventh grade before they, they make the decision to leave either band or orchestra. Typically, once a student leaves band or orchestra and drops that instrument, they do not come back. The third option um, for students who, who absolutely just do not want to continue in band or orchestra is students can join choir. So um, choir is a, a um, 7 12 class, so it's actually going to be combined with middle school and high school students. Um, but it's an option for students who do not want to continue in band or orchestra, or if a student is just passionate about singing, um, they can join choir as well. Our class or our schedule next year, um, different from the elementary school, will have seven 50 minute classes daily. So our school day starts at 845 and runs until 329. And during that time, we'll have seven 50 minute classes in the lunch period. And then a couple days a week, we're actually going to shorten those seven classes to about 45 minutes and we'll have an intervention and enrichment period built in as well. But on all days, the school day runs from 845 until 330. Um, students are able to be dropped off in front of our building for or to walk if they're walkers, and they can begin arriving at uh, 8.30. That's when we start providing supervision. And then the building opens at 8.39, and the students are expected to be in their first class ready to go by um, uh, 8.45. And then our school day, like I said, ends at 3.29, and we ask that all students are off campus or are under supervision by 3.45. So, uh, if a student wants to stay for practice, we're asking the coaches to provide supervision um, otherwise, or if they want to go to the fitness center, we provide supervision there. But otherwise, we do ask by 345 that students um, leave the school just because we're not able to provide supervision beyond that. The mission statement for our middle school, um, we want to provide a safe and challenging and educational environment in which each student is valued as an individual given the opportunity to develop as a socially responsible, self-directed, lifelong learner. So we want to look at each one of our students individually and challenge them individually, meet them where they are, and push them to grow as individuals who are socially responsible and self-directed um, and, and who are lifelong learners. We want them to fall in love with learning. So we want them to, to discover their passion while they're in middle school um, and, and grow that passion as they move towards high school and start thinking about what life after high school looks like. Middle school is quite a bit different than the elementary school, and um, we do expect more just because we think it's developmentally appropriate, but we also give a lot more freedom. So the students have a lot more freedom to travel. Um, the students are always excited because they get to chew gum, um, which is, is kind of funny that it's such a small thing is such a big deal to students. But, but we do um, expect a lot more, but we also provide a lot more freedom for our students. When the students arrive at the beginning of seventh grade, each student will be issued a Chromebook. And while the, the Chromebook will still be the property of the school, the student will be able to take that Chromebook home each night. They're expected to charge it each night. They're expected to have it at school each day. So um, it's kind of the evolution of technology and, and the Chromebook is replacing the textbooks and pens and pencils and some of those things that we've used in the past, though we still expect students to have pens and pencils. Um, we do expect the Chromebook to be used, taken home each day, and then at the end of the school year, we collect it back up. 
our grading policy uh, follows Mills Law. Um, it's a 90 to 100 is an A, and you can see 80 to 89 B, 70 to 79 C. Um, we do recognize our students with an honor roll um, each quarter. So students who have a 3.5 grade point average for the quarter or higher with no grades below a C um, will be recognized as earning um, the honor roll. And then uh, just touching base on some of the different transition activities, we, we recognize that transitioning from elementary school to middle school is different. So um, the first thing we did was the school visit where the students were able to come up here, spend a day getting to see the building, um, getting to know the teachers, experience the classes. Uh, we normally would do an in-person parent orientation, but this video is taking um, the place of that because we're not able to meet currently. And then um, the Mills Law teachers and middle school teachers, we also uh, try to reach out to the Antioch teachers as well. We just try to discuss in general student work, student readiness, so that we're able to support the students when they get here. Um, we, we try not to have these discussions be too long because we want the students to have a clean slate and a fresh start when they get here. So we don't dwell on um, students. We really just get an, uh, kind of an overview and what support students need, but then we want them to have a fresh start. When the students get here next year, some of the things that we're going to intentionally be doing, we're, we're trying to build a seventh grade orientation where the students can actually, the new seventh grade students can come in before the school year and familiarize themselves further with our building and our teachers. And then the first couple of weeks of school, all of our teachers will be focusing on organizational procedures. Um, so the organizational procedures for each different class that will support the students. So setting up a binder, organizing folders, uh, writing down homework assignments, those types of things. And then in addition, um, we will focus on study skills, note taking and test taking. So those are all things that our students will experience that, that just look different as students grow and get older. Extracurriculars that are available in seventh grade is when we are formally able to start offering extracurriculars um, through the Ohio High School Athletic Association. So we have cross country, volleyball, um, those are both fall sports and began in the, the very beginning of August. And then in the winter, we have basketball that typically begins the end of October, or first week in November. And then in the spring, we have track and field. Additionally, our students can take part in student council, power the pen, which is our writing club and competition, photo club, speech and debate, and they can be part of our United Students Society. The last thing I want to talk about is our Into the Wild trip. So we will be preparing for our fourth year of Into the Wild this upcoming year. Um, and more details will be coming in our June mailing about that. But the, the big thing is we just really encourage students over the summer to get on their bikes. Um, the, the trip typically falls at the end of September, about five weeks into the school year. So um, we encourage students and families to get out and, and be active together this summer, take bike rides, get comfortable. Um, riding on a bike for a long time um, and and just getting that cardio build up so that students can be successful and then like i said more information will be coming about the into the wild trip in our june mailing if you have any questions please uh, submit those questions by email and if it would be easier for you to talk by phone just email me your phone number and i would be glad to give you a call and answer any questions i can answer for you thank you and i look forward to to hearing from you and meeting you soon